All right. Okay. Just to uh, help uh, sync up my voice with yours, here's a little here's mm-hmm. a little ditty. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, three, two, one, two. All right. So, uh, how do we introduce this? We never actually named this podcast. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Boy, yeah, this was... I, we really thought this through. Um, okay. Hi, I'm Ethan. Wait. Oh, okay, go on. <laughs> okay, and I'm yes. Mike. And today, we are starting our uh, test of a new podcast uh, until we get bored of it, all about... Newspaper comic strips adapted into the motion picture medium. We will be largely exploring specifically specials that were made for primetime television, many of which may have been pilots for a series that never went to series. But we're also going to be talking about the actual series that came of them. And uh, and maybe sometimes we'll get into just uh, just plain comic strips because both of us are lifetime comics fans. And who knows, maybe we'll just start talking about uh, random TV specials we remember. Who, who's, who's to say how far this will go? Well, there's definitely a lot of material to dig into. And Ethan, I, I wanted you to be the person that I did this project with because I think you are probably the most knowledgeable person that I know and possibly the most knowledgeable person, period, about old newspaper comic strips. <laughs> well, there are plenty of people who know more about newspaper comic strips than I am, but I'm willing to bet that most of them are a whole lot more boring than I am, too. So, uh, <laughs> hopefully... There may be people who know more, but none who are, who are more passionate yes. about these topics. Um, because I think we're, bo- we're both around the same age. We just mm-hmm. established that I'm about five months older than you. Yes. So... Uh, but we both kind of grew up in the, the the classic age of or the golden age of newspaper comics, as some people call them. The, go- just the golden age of newspaper yeah. comics? You mean the 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 Little Nemo and Slumberland era? Yeah, we are both big fans of the Yellow Kid. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, for us, the golden age was well, really, it was the golden age of what we're talking about now, which is the uh, the golden age of the newspaper comic strip spinoff. Would you say that? I'd say that. Yes. Because um, there have been plenty it was of the... things that were spun off of newspaper comics. After all, Popeye started out in the newspaper. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Symbol Theater. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but nobody remembers any of those guys. No, no. No one remembers ham gravy or castor oil anymore. <laughs> they, uh, how much of, well, I guess actually uh, Popeye would qualify for this podcast. Yes, we should totally we... do something about Popeye. Yeah. All right, Popeye is now on the docket. Yes. Uh, hey. But for our first one, uh-huh. our first episode, I wanted to talk about a newspaper comic that became a movie uh, that I I saw on YouTube and kind of inspired this whole idea. And the newspaper comic is called Marvin. Yes. Uh, and the vid- the movie based on Marvin was called Marvin colon Baby of the Year. <laughs> We're very excited about this. <laughs> yes. Now, um, uh, Ethan, do you want to uh, tell... Uh, well, I don't know how much you know about Marvin. Okay. Uh, do, I'll, do you want to... I'll tell you what I do know about Marvin. Yeah, we should... Let's let's make this a feature of future podcasts is getting people up to speed with the comic strip if they're not already familiar with it. Because... Yeah, I feel especially in this one, a lot of people might not be familiar with Marvin. Yeah, because it really is... Uh, dependent on what was in your local newspaper at the time if you ever subscribed to the newspaper in the first place i'll bet a lot of our audience is uh millennials who never actually had a comics page oh yeah that's true all these kids are too busy eating avocado toast to know what a newspaper is (laughs) you know as if you know as if i didn't usually get i'm about as old as you can get and still be called a millennial they keep trying to crowd me into generation x but i'm really not i'm just but anyway. you're a uh, zenial, right? Is that the term that they've decided on? I prefer Oregon Trail generation myself. Oh, that that fits. I too played the Oregon Trail. Yeah, that's what we all have in common is the Oregon Trail generation had uh, analog childhoods and digital adulthoods. That is what makes us. Unique. And also, uh, we will all eventually die of dysentery. And at the moment, we have exhaustion. Yes. So very <laughs> apt. But anyway, so we were speaking of Marvin. Marvin. Marvin is 
to put it in the bluntest possible terms, the longest lived Garfield ripoff. Except instead yes. of a cat, <laughs> he's a baby. But they make the exact same jokes with Marvin as they do with Garfield. He's fat. He takes his parents for granted. He has a dog with that he has a sibling rivalry relationship with. And mm, that's right. There's a there's another baby that he is also rivals with. So kind of like his normal, I guess. And I remember. It, oh, go on. Oh, I was going to say it's even the art style is very obviously inspired by Garfield as well. Very clear. Uh, Marvin's always got that kind of heavy lidded on we look yeah. just like Garfield does. Where he's always looking um, right at the camera like, can you believe this shit? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, uh, so yeah, Marvin, I, I guess it is the longest running Garfield ripoff. So it's a success in that in that sense. It's evolved um, it's a, a lot over the years, but never to the point where you wouldn't call it a Garfield ripoff, I would say. Yeah. Um, and reading Marvin, it's really apparent what the limits of the Garfield ripoff format are. Yeah. Because all the things that you read, like Garfield doing, and you're thinking, oh, I love it because it's Garfield. You know, when a cat does it, it's cute and funny. But when a baby does it, it's loathsome. Yeah. So, also, so Marvin is very... Mm -hmm. I want to throw in another thing about Marvin is that as a kid, when I was about the age that this special came out, I was a fan of Marvin. I liked it. I wished it was in our paper. And then I got it in our paper and I was kind of stunned by a personal change, a personality change on the cartoonist because he spent a lot of time attacking PC culture. Really? Yeah, this what what like year was that? 92 to 94. I wow, say, interesting. Yeah, I mean, there were a bunch of things about, you know, you know there was one with the uh, detective uh, saying, I accuse you of being a murderer. It's like, how dare you use the uh, ma masculine word murderer? The correct word is murder person. Wait, I, I would like to back up just a second. Um, are you saying that someone was accusing Marvin of murder? No, M Marvin was uh, the PI in the situation. It was one of those spaceman Smith oh, kind of things. Oh, okay. So Marvin was, was having a fantasy yes. sequence. Okay, I gotcha. And of I'm, course, babies I would... are, love to uh, comment on these kids today and their uh, new language. Yeah, I would not put it past Marvin to kill someone <laughs> because Marvin is a clinical sociopath. Um, you know, you, you read Marvin and he's, you know, he's narcissistic. He doesn't believe that his parents have any inner life of their own. He just lives for himself. He is, you know, he he, he would kill you if he could. Yes. Um, it's he's the, he's like Ray Bradbury's the small assassin. There's something about uh, when you look into Marvin's eyes, black eyes, <laughs> like a doll's eyes. He's well, he has nothing but the, uh, you know, the, the single the black dot pupil thing <laughs> as, as a comic strip character would. Uh, Marvin is is. I guess it makes sense that Marvin would attack PC culture since, A, the um, dominant readers of the comics page by 1992 were old people. And uh, children who were absolutely starving for something to read, like me. That's true. If you were a child at that point, I mean, because when I was a child, I liked Marvin because it looked like Garfield. Yes. So I I didn't know any. I didn't read. I don't remember Marvin being particularly funny or good yeah but and we wanna, he just reminded me we want to both mm -hmm. come down on this right now first off first uh, podcast we want to establish garfield is good we want, yes i we will second that anti-garfield we are uh, garfield boosters yes uh it's especially i think if you compare garfield to marvin you can really see you know some of the craft in garfield i know it is it's very trendy to mock garfield for being kind of a you know, a, a very um, eh. soulless corporate product, you know, just a product of uh, marketing and advertising. Uh, but compared to Marvin, uh, Garfield is high art. Mm. Yeah. Uh, hey, first can, of all, um, can we pause for just I a second? Think, oh, sure, sure. Should I pause the thing or just? Yeah, just pause the thing. And, and we're back. Are yep. we back? We're back. Okay. Okay, now this is going to look this is going to look a much better. I can tell just by looking at the waveform. Nice. So, anyway, okay, where were we? We were okay. We we're speaking one, of two. Uh, Garfield. I think was it. We were talking of Garfield. Yeah, I'm sorry. You were about to start saying something, and then I uh, had technical oh, difficulties. No worries. I was just going to say that. Um, you know, when you when you read Garfield, well, here's the thing. Obviously, 
Tom Armstrong, the cartoonist behind Marvin, saw Thank Garfield. you. I hadn't looked him up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, when I was a kid, I actually thought it was the same guy who did both strips because I, I was an idiot. But um, And you didn't have U.S. Acres in your paper, I'll bet, because no, nobody did. Nobody did. I had the books, but... Um, yeah, me too. Yeah. I and, loved U.S. Acres. Uh, we were the only kids who knew that it existed before Garfield and Friends. <laughs> we probably were. A lot of my friends had... I, I brought this. To, I brought my books to school, and my friends would be like, "What is this? It looks like Garfield, but not." And it's like, "You're right." Yeah, I remember like a lot of people when Garfield Friends came out. They're like, "Oh yeah, U.S. Acres. It's like the British Garfield. It runs in British papers." <laughs> it's like, well, why is it called U.S. Acres then? Uh, but it's not. It was called Orson's Farm there. So. That's true. Yeah, I guess they had to originalize it. <laughs> um, but Garfield, uh, you know, obviously Tom Armstrong saw Garfield and said, I can do this too. Kids, you know, apparently, uh, Jim Davis saw that there were no, um, uh, there were lots of comics about dogs, none about cats. Here's a comic for cat lovers. It's going to be big. And Tom Armstrong thought, well, lots of people have babies. I'll just do the same thing <laughs> for, uh, parents of babies. And he forgot that, like, cats are adorable and babies are awful. So people only <laughs> like babies if it's their own baby. Well, that's that's the thing, is that Marvin is not really for baby lovers. It's for baby haters. Yeah. Well, it's if you are a parent, new parent and you have an awful baby who keeps you up all yes. night, you read this and you just – you feel solidarity in, in your hate for Marvin. That's, yeah, you want a good comic about a bad baby? The comic strip you want is actually called Bad Baby. It's actually real, funny. Is that a real yes. comic? Yeah, it was around the same time, the 80s, late, late 80s, early 90s. I don't think it exists anymore. I did not know that, but that's why I have yep. you on this podcast. <laughs> yes, because you had somebody who would spend hours and hours in the Walden books in the mall pouring through every every single comic strip collection, and then the weird side collections of the things that... Lynn Johnson did before for better or for worse and that kind of stuff. So <laughs> yes, I, <laughs> it was a time before the internet, you know, you had to make your own entertainment in those days. Yeah. And you had to memorize it because you couldn't afford to buy the books. Oh, and they sure as heck didn't have them at the library. Yeah. No, the only uh, cartoon book my library had was uh, Charles Adams. Peanuts? Oh, good, good. Yeah. That's a good collection. It is. It's good. It was just like, as a kid, I was like, what is this? This is in the newspaper. I don't know what this is. <laughs> and some of them are so dry or so out of date with their technology that you don't know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that was a recurring theme of my childhood. The library just had New Yorker comics, uh, not newspaper collections. But well, I had collections of Peanuts at least. I read oh. a bunch of. Yeah, that was the that was nice. But Ooh, uh, well, aren't, aren't you special living in? Uh, <laughs> Whoa. San Diego. <laughs> Whoa, well, well, look at the big city guy with his uh... <laughs> with his how long great pumpkin how long collection. <laughs> oh yeah, man. Uh, but um, Marvin Mar as Marvin uh, Marvin did apparently get one animated special, which is yes, interesting in... because it's Why? not related to a holiday. No, it's not. It's not even. Because most of these ho specials were holiday specials. Like, I just mentioned uh, The Great Pumpkin. The, it's The Great Pumpkin. Charlie Brown is one of the best-known ones. Also, uh, uh, Charlie Brown Christmas. Various Garfields. And even Ziggy and BC got it. Yeah. animated specials. And I don't... There were some Kathy specials at the same time, but I don't think they were holiday-related either. So They're, No, they weren't. They were kind no. of just... Uh, Various tribulations of a single woman in uh, early 80s related. Yes. Um, but definitely we want to talk about those two in a future episode. Oh, yes. We should we should uh, try and uh, just name some at the end so uh, our listeners can uh, tell us which ones they're most excited to hear us uh, hear about. Oh, good idea. Uh, that'll also help narrow it down because there are a lot of these things. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> but Marvin, Baby of the Year, since there are no baby-related holidays, I guess they just decided to make this a special about Marvin winning a baby contest. And well, there is one baby-related holiday. Which was New that? Year's Day. Oh, that's true. Baby um, New Year. So maybe that was maybe this was aired on New Year's Day. I don't even know. I maybe it doesn't was. seem like it though. It does not seem particularly New Year's related. Well, it's not New Year's related at all. Um, no, I. I think it seems that, to be in the summer. Yeah, I don't know. 
That's true. Uh, it just seems to be they were like, well, um, I don't know. I feel like they could have done a baby related uh, animation thing. It was, you know, there are baby related there. Are, there are baby cartoons that are entertaining. Uh, Rugrats. Yeah. I mean, I think that rats off my head. But apparently <laughs> they decided that the best way to go is just Marvin is a baby. So all he can do is actual baby things, which includes eating and pooping. And well, it's not like with Garfield where they had the option of putting him up on his hind legs so he can do human things. If you have if you have Marvin learn to walk, he's he's just a child now. So yeah, but he could crawl. I mean, the Rugrats yeah. the Rugrats are ambulatory, although technically mm-hmm. they don't do it when human. Well, sorry, they don't do it when adults are around. <laughs> 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 yeah, when when humans come back into the room, they all have to drop dead and pretend to be toys again. <laughs> <laughs> so so the baby the, so marvin when you go to the nickelodeon studios theme park and you see the tommy costume yell andy's coming and he'll just drop to the ground <laughs> oh, oh and then yeah and i remember my favorite part is when tommy fought meteora queen of the stars <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, obscure joke, kids. Ask your parents. Um, We're like this all the time. Yeah. But um, actually, speaking of, Marvin does look a lot like Chucky, now that I think about it. A little. He's a redhead, but he's, you know, Chucky has that kind of, well, you know, I'll give Marvin this. He looks better than a Klasky Chupo character. Yes. he... He looks really dull, but at least he doesn't look like a diseased lung. Yeah. Yeah. He is recognizable as a human child. Yes. Which, yeah, is the best thing you could say about Marvin. Uh, this particular, you know, this particular animated special, like we said, it's about Marvin winning a baby contest, but it really yeah. feels like it, it's a simple <laughs> plot and it spins its wheels forever to get there. Because Do you think it is actually a pilot? I, God, so boring. They, you really think they were going, they thought, hey, we're going to get a Marvin series out of this. We're going to be the new Simpsons. Oh, wait, the Simpsons hasn't come out yet because it's 1989. What? But, yeah. So it's 1989. This was, I wonder, did this come out prior? This came out before Garfield and Friends, right? I, I'm Maybe? Maybe. Like, the, I think it was the same year. Okay. So maybe, because at that point, I know how many, anim- how many, uh, how many comic strips had received animated series by that point. I know oh, that boy. I know that Charlie Brown and Snoopy was a series. Yes, there was the Charlie Brown and Snoopy show already. And there Gar- wasn't yet the there wasn't yet the Mother Goose and Grimm series. No, that was late nineties or mid to late nineties, no. I think, wasn't it? No, that uh, was ninety one or ninety two. Oh, seriously, I didn't realize it was that yeah. early. Wow, it was at the same time as uh, as Little Shop. Oh wow, yeah, that was mm, that was a thing. <laughs> yeah, that was a thing. <laughs> I, you know, I, I remember all these things because they were featured in comics on the back of Zillions magazine when I was a kid. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And that's how I know all these things are uh, put together. Like, yes. So you remember the times. Okay. So so this times. was before Mother Goose and Grimm. It may have come out around the same time that Garfield and Friends was a thing. So... Yeah, they probably, now that I think about it, they probably were expecting we're going to have a Marvin series because the uh, the intro song where they're like, uh-oh, here comes Marvin. Really- yeah, I mean, boy, is there any way to turn people off from your, from your thing faster than having this lazy, dowdy, fat, farty sound song? <laughs> yeah, it's... Um- <laughs> it's... It's Marvin. <laughs> it's like, oh, everybody hates that Marvin. Oh, uh, God. No, he is, he is. Why didn't we throw him into the high school dumpster <laughs> when we had him in the shower? This is Marvin is 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 uh, Edward Gorey's the beastly baby. <laughs> you know, he looks a lot like him. Actually. Yeah, it's a beastly baby with just hair. That's that's the only difference. <laughs> Uh, but the seri- the, the, the episode begins that Marv, I guess Marvin's parents, uh, who are 
oh god i hate them as well they're awful yeah um his his, his dad's name is jeff i don't know his mom's name i think it was uh jenny Jen, jeff and jenny jeff and jenny so uh aren't those what you call oh no a jack and a jenny i was thinking i was about to say is that what they call donkeys a <laughs> uh, close close i was like if his name had been jack and her name had been jenny it would almost have been clever because they're both jackasses <laughs> they really are uh they are because marvin's dad jeff comes home from work to speak to his wife and immediately she just comes out. It's so passive aggressive because he's all yeah. like, hey, 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 work was great. How is it at home? And she's like, it's great. Marvin spit up on me. <laughs> and it's like, God, these people, these, this couple hates each other. Now, my favorite thing is that we, we zoom in for the first time on Marvin sucking on his bottle. And then the door, like the doorbell rings or, or is it just that you hear the, the car Pull think, up. Yeah, the doorbell rings, and then <laughs> his dad comes in and starts making yeah. fun of Marvin's weight. Yeah. No, but my favorite thing is that uh, we hear him arrive, and his mom says, Marvin, daddy's home. Like, could you get the door, I guess? <laughs> 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 With that sort of, like, you know, let him in. <laughs> could you buzz daddy in? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, baby geniuses. <laughs> And then when when the dad comes in and like picks him up and he's like, "Oh, Marvin, you're a like huge, you're a huge fat ass." And Marvin is is um thinking a la Garfield, you know, ah. wise wisecracks at the camera. Yes, and he always makes fun of my weight, but I'll get my revenge when it's time to choose his nursing home. <laughs> That's better than the line in the actual movie, though. I'm sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh he he steals his dad's handkerchief though. And I think, or his tie? I don't really know. This does not play at all into anything that happens in the movie. Marvin just does it because he's a jerk. And, um, yeah, and then um, in, my, in my notes, I, was, I just wrote down uh, about ten times I hate Marvin. And is there supposed <laughs> to be a laugh track? Because Marvin you, you, constantly I- makes quips that fall flat. And maybe if there's a laugh track, I could know that they were supposed to be funny. I'm really impressed you took notes, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to. I All wanted I was to remember. Instead of taking notes, I just remember to uh, take to uh, unmute it sometimes, for the most part. But. <laughs> um, uh, uh, also, I think I wrote down that Marvin's dad seems to be on Quaaludes. He's, so, he has no affect, no reaction to anything. Now, compare Marvin's dad to Daryl from Baby Blues. They've kind of got the same nose. They do, yeah, yeah. Not um, quite as impressive as Daryl's. He has quite the nose, but... Uh, yeah, well, he's got a nose that is literally... He's as, he's as long as he is tall, so... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Man, but uh, Baby Blues is a Baby Blues is strip. better. Yeah. Yes. Um, which also got its own series at one point, I believe. Um, yes, a series which is... Maybe not quite as disappointing as Marvin Baby of the Year, but pretty close. Yeah. We'll t- but we'll talk about that again, that later. Yeah. No, Marvin is just... but So they basically, the parents decide that they can't stand Marvin and they need to have a vacation to get away from their awful baby. Um, as one does. Right, exactly. So they they call up uh, Marvin. How old do you think Marvin is? He's got to be... You think he's of, one? Yeah. I mean, not even... Because you, because you're by the time you're two, you're going to be kind of walking around a little bit, right? I mean, taller. yeah, I mean, he's so he's like a nine month old or something. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, a, a week with Marvin is enough to make you want to kill yourself. So, uh, I mean, because that is Marvin's defining characteristic is that he is awful and self centered and screams a lot. And <laughs> you know, anytime his parents do anything, Marvin's like, "Well, my dad or Marvin groupies." Yeah. Ah, yeah. Mar- they love me. Oh yeah. Let me drink in that affection. Yeah. <laughs> so they call ah. up um no Wouldn't this be so much better if if Marvin had the voice of Jason Alexander? So basically, yeah, it would be Duckman then. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be actually no Marvin would be baby hermit at that point. <laughs> which would be an well, improvement. Yes, it would. It would. I think I it's know, actually maybe. Dana Hill doing the voice, who was also Dana on Duck, oh, That's Duck right. Man. Yes. So. Dana Hill, who was uh, the, a bunch of other things. And uh, then she 
Well, then she had a then she died rather tragically. So uh, a little yeah, yeah. moment of silence for her there. But she, yeah, but her her role as Marvin not her best work. But you know, we all do stuff to pay the rent. Yeah, you know, I mean, the problems in Marvin. Well, it's, she does a serviceable job. She's not like there's nothing wrong with her performance. It's just that she has to play Marvin. So yeah. Um, but anyway, I so, mean, if I were doing Marvin, if they hired me to play Marvin, I'd be. I'd be pinching my nose the whole time. <laughs> it's me, Marvin. I'm a noxious baby. <laughs> Is Marvin supposed to be hated? I mean, I, I feel like I feel like we are supposed to sympathize with his parents. Like but... I said, this isn't for baby lovers. This is for this is for people who are happily child free for the most part. Yeah, this is for the people who post on that subreddit about crotch droppings. They feel very <laughs> superior about themselves. Um but oh god so well you know this this um yeah so Marvin's Marvin's parents call up his grandparents no first yes. they find they they have a piece of paper that indicates there's a baby of the year contest and they're like we yes. better hide this before uh you know Marvin's grandparents this Marvin's grandparents gave us this We're yeah they sent it, it to them yeah and, and... Then they leave the baby alone with their grandparents for the weekend, the same weekend that the uh, that the baby of the year contest is happening at the mall. Right. So it's a very local baby of the year contest. Yeah, it's, you know, yeah, it's a uh, uh, baby of the municipality, apparently. Um, Can you win the baby of the year contest more than one year in a row? Well, you, it depends how long you're a baby, I guess. No baby, no finer baby has been born in the last year, so two times in a row. <laughs> well, Marvin, um, he really, no, Marvin's parents don't want him to enter the baby of the year contest because he'll get a big head. Because apparently <laughs> they believe Marvin, Marvin will understand the proceedings that are happening. So, well, they're not wrong. He does, but. So that's, so they're cognizant of Marvin's, you know, um, uh, unnatural uh, precociousness that he has human, uh, uh sorry, <laughs> I keep saying human, that he has adult, uh, <laughs> brain powers, but he's trapped well, in a, in a baby. All body. the babies, all the babies that we see seem to, there's only yeah. four main babies in this whole thing. We mostly focus on Marvin and what's his cousin's name. Is it Megan? Megan. Megan yes. Megan. Yeah. I hate Megan, Megan is, all, uh, Megan is also in his grandparents. Uh, I almost said employ. <laughs> <laughs> care care yeah. is also she is she comes with them to take care of marvin and uh we get a lot of haha funny uh stuff about uh oh this is the difference between boys and girls haha <laughs> women's lib uh, yeah which seems woman at arms oh, it, it, it's so weirdly dated for like the, the, the 80s this whole like, women's lib did anyone even still say that in 1989 i mean no but you know it always takes about like 20 years before you know um before uh pop cu culture uh or not pop culture but before like um you know hollywood catches up to the culture so they always yeah. are a little bit behind at least uh, until the internet now we've kind of managed to uh move things forward because they're starting to get the idea that memes date very quickly yeah yeah exactly you know, if not for the internet i mean we might still be getting jokes about Zippergate. so oh god no well it's great because if they made marvin today instead of doing like really kind of hacky jokes about like i am woman hear me roar remember that from like 30 years ago you know, marvin <laughs> would just be doing the floss uh, <laughs> Marvin twerk of the year. <laughs> it would be like, oh, it's Marvin. No, or actually, it would be great because it would be memes that are slightly dated, just dated enough that you can tell that, like, you know, some corporate suit made them. So yeah, uh, Marvin would be all like, oh, I can has a cheeseburger. <laughs> Marvin, all your babies are belong to us. <laughs> yeah, Mar, Mar, Mar. Oh no, Marvin would be doing that <laughs> Ally McBeal ba dancing baby thing. <laughs> He's, he's, he is, he's a baby already, so it's perfect. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, thank god Marvin did not enter the meme era. This was, oh, we dodged well, a bullet with that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. I don't even... Oh gosh, did we establish is Marvin still an ongoing comic at this point? Yes, it is still happening. Uh, and uh, they, they've they actually made some uh, pretty... Uh, you wouldn't even recognize it anymore. It doesn't look like uh, him anymore. Wait a second. It doesn't look... Oh, sorry. Go on. 
Go on, go on. Uh, no, the to. I mean, it's still called Marvin. It's still about Marvin and Bitsy and probably some other dog. Yeah, there's a in the main strip. There's a dog named Bitsy who is like the sec the uh, the deuteragonist who's not in this uh, oh, show. That's right. That's weird. Actually, I wonder. If, hmm. Well, I wonder if he was added. Was he added later or something? Or? I guess so. It's like how Mother Goose and Grimm is now mostly about this black and white dog who's a, a ador- adorable ditz. Oh, weird. I haven't read Mother Goose and Grimm in a while, so I guess I missed that. Yeah. I was I'm actually, guessing it's... Go on. Oh, I was going to say, I was actually afraid because you mentioned how when you said Mar- you wouldn't recognize Marvin anymore, and I remember <laughs> how you said in the early 90s Marvin made a pivot to be like anti-PC, and I just had no. the vision of like, oh shit, did Marvin go full alt-right? <laughs> Marvin Fillmore. <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> just Marvin, like uh, with the, the the Pepe Frog face and a MAGA oh, hat. God. It's like, oh my god! <laughs> yeah. I just ate. <laughs> <laughs> and now Mar- all of Mar- Marvin's parents are just the NPC face. Oh. <laughs> 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 and exactly, Marvin would be like, "Ah, oh, my parents, they have no inner life of their own. They just repeat <laughs> lip-tard buzzwords, not like me. Mm. <laughs> and then, we oh, have- and yeah, that would make him an even bigger foil for um, Megan, who of course would now be presented as, oh, that SJW. Uh, the SJW mermaid, yeah. Yeah, they, they had, her hair would be blue <laughs> in this new Marvin. This new Marv- Hellworld Marvin that we're envisioning. <laughs> Uh, well, actually, you know, uh, I, I, I did notice when I was watching the Marvin, Marvin colon baby of the year, I kept uh-huh. thinking Marvin's grandfather appears to have like a weird Hitler youth undercut. So that fits right <laughs> into that as well. Oh, this is going in dark now, places. I really don't like yeah. this anymore. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Take it back. Take it back. Where, where were we going with this in the first place? Well, Marvin's Marvin, uh, tricks his grandparents by throwing a ball at that piece of paper that his parents hid and reveals the remi- that reminds them that the baby of the year contest is happening. And they're like, let's enter Marvin and Megan into that contest so they can like, so we can see which one of them wants it more. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, they, they, they do that. They go to the, the mall to do their, Oh, first plot point. They, uh, Test the babies on how quickly they can fit colored pegs into a uh, wooden board. Oh, that's right. You know, you got some baby Einstein stuff going on there, which, you know. Yeah, that was it. And uh, Megan does it, does it uh, really fast and goes, ha ha, girls mature faster than guys. Girl power, am I right? <laughs> and, and and Marvin's like, no, I could have done it if I wanted to. Yeah. T- typical man, uh, that Marvin. But while they're doing that, that's when Marvin picks up the telephone, right? To apparently do reps. I mean, not the telephone, yeah, he, the the receiver. Yeah, the old the old timey telephone, not not so old that you have to use that you have to hold the candlestick in one hand and the receiver in the other. Just the old timey ones where it's con- connected with a cord, and his parents aren't able to call because the phone is off the hook. Remember and when that next- was a thing? Yeah, this, that's the kind of thing you're going to have to explain to kids now if they watch it. Yeah, it was like it was a different world where you only had rotary phones, and if someone had picked them up, you couldn't get through. Um, it's which, weird how telecommunications have uh, rendered so many of our uh, old uh, old films uh, obsolete. Yeah, it's weird because when I watched this, I thought, like, this is such a convoluted way to prevent the parents from calling up to check on Marvin. But I guess at the time, that was a very common experience people had. So most folks watching it would be like, oh, yeah, relatable. I always wonder if it actually is related to something someone's actual baby did. But uh, maybe not. Could be. It's all drawn from life. Well, like Lynn Johnson, you know, took all her, the wacky things that her kids did. And Bill Keen did the same for the family circus. Uh, maybe yeah. Tom Armstrong, you know, actually had an awful baby that he hated and <laughs> decided I'm going to I'm going to monetize this awful baby. This was if, in the old days before YouTube. This was how you monetized, you know, terrible babies. <laughs> you, you couldn't do funny things with them on video. Uh, so uh, so if people found out that Calvin didn't actually exist, that he wasn't Bill Watterson's cute son, that he was just his idea of the most horrible child imaginable, they'd be like, fake! It's a fix! 
<laughs> they'd be like, I can tell this is uh, this is fake. <laughs> Yeah, really fake. Notice that in this panel, the stuffed tiger looks normal, while in this one, he looks like an actual tiger. Explain that, Watterson! Did you hear that Berkeley Breath didn't actually have a pet penguin that talked? Ah! <laughs> I just don't know what to believe anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so, 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 so anyway, where were we? Oh, so they, they have yeah. the, they, they go Marvin. to the mall. They go to the mall to have the baby contest. It's, um, and that's where they meet this Chrissy, the competition, yes. uh-huh. and, and Chrissy is what we call in the the baby uh, contest industry a sexy baby, I yes. guess, because she's got like sexy baby eyes and kind of a sexy baby breathy voice when she thinks. And, and her eyes are drawn so differently from everyone else that at first. I always think she's a doll. I think yeah. she is not one of the characters. That's right. And uh, I like when her mom, I guess it's her mom, though her mom is drawn normally and not sexy. Uh, her mom says, Chris, baby Chrissy, I think she actually refers to her baby as baby Chrissy. Has, baby Chrissy. Has won every baby contest in the county, which indicates that this is there are multiple baby contests in this one county. Do you think the the baby of the year contest is actually supposed to be a championship? I think it's is like, everyone else a, a winner somehow, or it's the ch- it's the champ. Well, it would be, except that Marvin and Megan uh, clearly this is their first rodeo, so they just popped yeah. in and they they let them in. I guess it was a day of signups. So, uh, but yeah, it, it's not very clear. Um, and also, yeah, it, it, as we established before, local baby. So this is also. Um, the babies in this are, are not, they're, they're very ugly babies. No. Very sloppy well, babies. every baby, every baby in this is very ugly. Even baby Matilda or whatever her name is, is, you know, she still looks like a raggedy Ann that happened to have organic eyeballs. Yeah. But, uh, don't forget that she is such a sexy baby <laughs> that when Marvin sees her. Here we go. He has an orgasm. <laughs> Okay, for the video edition, I'm just going to splice in the actual scene right here. Okay. <laughs> yes, you saw the right. We saw Marvin sees this baby, and you actually see a locomotive going through a tunnel. Yes, and like a, a wave crashing with, I think, a rubber ducky in it, if I remember yes. right. There's like a and rocket a rocket blasting, blasting off. off. You know, sausage is being made. It's just, yeah. it's not subtle. It's, um... And I suppose he wants to pork the infant. Yeah, it's um, it's I guess it's one of those things. Maybe the eighties were a more innocent time where if you saw a baby like having an orgasm, you're like, that's that's cute. But nowadays, you see a baby having an orgasm, and it's like, that's weird. I mean, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm go- I'm going out on a limb here and thinking, that's a, I don't know. About, I don't really want to think about Marvin getting you know excited. No. Or, uh, you know, I mean, I don't really want to think about any baby doing this, but especially not Marvin. Uh, I mean, I mean, it's not, it's not like they're age inappropriate for one another, but true, still. true. <laughs> uh, I mean, this is, I like, yeah, our first episode, and we go on a, a diatribe about baby orgasm. So, um, this is hang setting. on, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's in for a wild ride. Uh, but this is, um, yeah. But but Marvin is smitten with baby Chrissy. Uh, Chrissy, 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 Chrissy. Sorry, and he thinks she is the best baby. He has, I think, he has like a fantasy sequence where they're like, oh no, he's imagining him winning the baby contest. Yes, and and then Megan shows up in an ice cream truck and steals it. Yeah. And then that's the end of it. We don't see him getting it back or anything like that. So yeah, I don't know. It was it. It was just feels it, like they cut part of the fantasy out for time. Yeah, they're like we only got twenty minutes. We got to fit in a lot of uh, you know new food changeables ads. So yeah, <laughs> but you know, um, so they oh, but then they have there's that other baby they have to compete against. Vince the Prince. Yeah. Yes. Because again, this is the 1980s, so of course you have to have a 1950s reference. Yes, because the 80s, yeah, the 50s were to the 80s what the 80s have been to ever since. Yes. So Vince the Prince is a greaser baby who has Mm -hmm. a big, greasy pompadour 
just like the Fonz. And yes. He wears a little kind of like leather jacket, and he talks with his like, own, yeah, with oh, his, his nickname, nickname on it. On it. Yeah. yeah. And he's got like, and he talks like, "Yo, baby, I'm Vince the Prince," you know, like a rockabilly guy. And at some point, we. Everyone who was older than us decided that the guy from Greece was the pinnacle of cool. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Which, you know, he's like, oh, he's got a leather jacket. That's cool. <laughs> um, we've been living. Yeah. And we've been suffering from that ever since. Uh, but uh, Vince the Prince is instantly uh, into Megan. And Megan is all like, oh, male chauvinist piglet. Uh, <laughs> which, you know, I suppose was high hilarity in 1989. Um, they did, the word male chauvinist pig was a uh, very early meme for you guys. Yes, that's right. And it's funny because he's a piglet because he's a baby. Oh, now I get it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just thought I got it. I was like, I, I like that little touch there when I saw it. I was like, ah, I like that. They remembered that these are all babies, <laughs> but uh, you know it'll be funnier. Well, suckling chauvinist pig that would actually be funnier honestly <laughs> that would be that would be a lot funnier um but then they have a bunch of baby contests to determine who is the baby of the year and you know, determining like the fastest baby i mean right. honestly they have a baby race and Everyone is standing around, kind of like egging and on their walkers. Babies. Yeah, these babies going on. It looks like something that would happen in a basement in Tijuana, honestly. <laughs> it, it's this weird, like, are they all betting on it? It's super strange. <laughs> but the, man, that would be great that, if they had actually had a, a thing with a bunch of guys throwing down money and shouting for the babies. Like, come on, come on! I got twenty bucks right on that kid. <laughs> that would be great, honestly. <laughs> But uh, so they're racing and, oh, what is it? Like um, Vince is going to win, but Megan stops him by grabbing onto his walker. Uh, yeah, because he, she says, well, I don't want Vin Marvin to win, but I definitely don't want that male chauvinist piglet to win. Yeah. So, so Megan uh, ch uh, cheats for on Marvin's behalf. So Marvin wins the ba the fastest baby race. Yes, um, another example of uh, women's shouldering a male ego. That's true. You know, it's that's right. You know, again, a mediocre male baby wins, all because uh, because women. a woman dragged the uh, dragged the good male baby down. See, Dave Sim was right about women. <laughs> this is like, I, oh, the, the 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 once again the the babe the lady baby void destroys creative masculine baby energy <laughs> the uh but then uh megan does win a different contest they have a baby gymnastics contest and megan is uh, apparently she can't walk but she can do backflips <laughs> and um yeah so that's that's megan's thing and uh, Marvin wins something too. What does he win? He wins like, uh, was it? I don't know. I'm 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 scrubbing through the thing because I don't remember some of these things, and I'm not not really able to find what happened. You know, um, he had Marvin won something, but it was off screen. Well, he won the uh, he won the race. Remember? Oh, you're right. He did. So wait a second. Oh, so what did baby? What did baby Chrissy win? I think she won the prettiest face or something. They just announced that oh. she won it. And then they were oh, like, okay. now while this so is all going on. So there are winners. Right. So all, while that's all going on, Marvin's parents decide, they freak out because they can't call. So they come back from their vacation and, um, or actually Marvin's mom is like, we got to get back because my parents can't be trusted with children. And Marvin's dad <laughs> is, you're, you're flipping out over nothing this is totally fine and she'll be like don't tell me i'm flipping out i'm a crazy woman <laughs> my, my maternal instincts are going wild so yeah um all i know is that if a woman tells you that her father cannot be trusted around small children oh listen to her oh yeah yeah oh we're going to some very dark places on this marvin episode <laughs> it's marvin he deserves it true true <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so Marv, sorry, not Marvin, 
Jeff and Jenny return and they get home. They see that the grandparents have decided to enter Marvin into the baby contest. And yeah, they all, just found the flyer lying around. They didn't yeah. see say. Uh, did they leave a note saying uh, next time you see it's Marvin will you be of the year? Blah blah blah. Yeah, and I don't think they did. they're all like, not on our watch. No baby of mine's gonna be a championship baby. <laughs> So make they, my baby a success. How dare you? Yeah. So they rush off to the ball to put a stop to this, <laughs> to the ball, <laughs> to the ball. <laughs> They're like, we're going to stop this baby. Tom Fuller. Whoops. Dropped my, I dropped my extensive notes on the ground. Let me pick them up. <laughs> um, so, Oh, that's right. Um, I also forgot to, me- I also forgot to mention that Chrissy's mom, when describing Chrissy also says that she is, breathtakingly beautiful uh, it's for a baby uh yes uh, yeah anyway so so barry barry marvin <laughs> Mar- marvin barry <laughs> it's, it's like yeah it's like hey hey you hear that hot that hot new baby noise you're looking for well listen to this <laughs> did you say hot new baby daddies <laughs> yeah oh, god um <laughs> uh, so so marvin uh, marvin um wait, let's see so marvin's parents are on their way yes. to the mall and finally it comes down to the last thing the last contest. yeah the three babies each of whom won a contest are being there the last contest is exactly what we saw marvin and megan doing before shoving pegs into the pegboard ah, and this yes. is what we call and, a checkoff's gun uh-huh now they call this specifically the manual dexterity contest and Megan is totally whooping butt at it. And Marvin is taking his own sweet time because he could totally win if he wanted to, but Chrissy is clearly having trouble. And Marvin's like, Oh, my would be girlfriend, I better do something. So he enacts his incredible sonic cry (laughs) that, that literally Shoots the pegs that she that Megan has already crammed out of her board and sends all of them flying into the air and makes them all shoop one by one into uh, Chrissy's board. As so, as, yeah, as as things happen like that, yeah. So the manual dexterity contest is won by Marvin's telekinetic abilities. <laughs> once again, well, uh, once again, we establish that Marvin is is a is a terrifying. Uh, like saucer baby type thing. Marvin will wish you into the cornfield yeah. if you don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that Mar- Marvin is uh, yeah, uh, Mar- Marvin the Midwich cuckoo. Yeah. <laughs> Mar- the the sequel is Marvin colon Village of the Damned. <laughs> Marvin, baby of the damned. <laughs> Yeah, they they just had to um they yeah in the in, we don't you, you don't usually see it in the comic because it's all black and white but he does have those like yellow those glowing yellow eyes so <laughs> oh my god Marvin uh but that is um uh that is uh, uh, that's really all you need to know I mean there's a uh, there's some closure where his Parents are like, well, okay, at least you can take a picture with him as a uh, souvenir for uh, for this adventure. And then, uh, and then Chrissy gives him a kiss. And then I guess that's all we need to know because it's just everyone going to bed after that. Yeah, that's that's pretty much. And then I think, oh yeah, then then they do the classic thing where Marvin thinks, oh, I wish I was an adult so I could stay up late like my parents do. But his parents. Well, guess what they're doing instead of staying up they're late. asleep they're on sleeping. the couch yeah. <laughs> oh never seen that one before but um again it just cements this is for parents and new babies who are like oh yeah i'm always just as exhausted as they are after dealing with my mm-hmm. crappy baby um so that- now mm-hmm. i'm just looking here at this picture of the two parents and i'm realizing that you know even today you know, we were just discussing how both of us are creeping up on 40. And even today, these two people look like grown ups. Yes. Capitalized. Yes. No, no, I don't know anyone my age who dresses like that. This is like, was it, was it a thing to, 
I don't know. People age differently this decade than they did in the 80s, it seems Well, they like. do, really. I mean, that's something I've noticed. I feel like people, uh, for, I'm sure there are various reasons behind it, but I feel like people did get older faster in those days. Um, I wonder if it has something to do with lead. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's all those chemtrails. Uh, no. <laughs> well, no, I was thinking about how we were born in the post, in the unleaded gasoline era. Oh, actually, that's a good point. Um, we also had fluoride in the water, so I believe that that's actually true. preserves you better. Well, I think it, yeah. it's, I think it's a lot of things. Uh, part of it, I believe, is probably just because, well, I mean, now... I guess the clothing is a little outdated, I guess. Yeah. I don't well, see a lot of guys going around wearing Jeff's outfit of a uh, yellow collared shirt under a wide, wide collared red sweater. Yeah. And uh, Marvin's mom, she's just wearing like a polo and kind of mom jeans, I think. But yeah. they just they they do have a very adult look to them. I think like you know in the past in the eighties, you get to a certain age and it's like, well, what is your life? Work and children, you know, your career and your yeah. kids. Yeah. And nowadays, um, they kind of screwed that up for us. That's so, right. Uh, yeah. If you're a millennial yeah. or a Oregon Trail generation, you've given yes. up on both of those things. So uh-huh. you're like, I'm going to I can be a child forever, forever, yeah. forever. And, you know, without those without, and without the stresses of um, jobs or horrible babies, we can maintain our youthful complexions longer. No, well, there is that. Yeah. Well, I mean, we shouldn't really be comparing our complexions to animated characters, but yeah. Well, I guess um, I'm going to go out. I'm going to. Well, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't have a lot of friends who have babies there yeah. are a few most of us are most of us are childless or just single so yeah. the not childless child free sorry yeah, child free. the ones i know who do have babies uh they they seem older i don't know if they look older but you know they have to be a little more mature because they are they raising have to pretend yeah they have to play grown up yeah they are raising a small human so i guess they have that responsibility um you know they have to they 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 can't just like you know, spend their entire day eating cereal out of the box like some of us. <laughs> but uh, the kicks, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, not the that, tricks. Tricks are for kids. The tricks are for kids. <laughs> Silly rabbit. Uh, but that is uh, so. Uh, Marvin, baby of the year. How would you compare Marvin, baby of the year, with Marvin the comic strip? Uh, what changes um, do we see here? Well, let's see. We have. And if anything, I'd say it was too accurate. I, they should have taken more liberties with it because there's not much to the Marvin comic strip. Yeah, it's just Marvin sitting there making quips and being fat. And it's it all yeah. he does here too. Oh, speaking of which, you know how I'll bet most people found out about this cartoon? Uh, us talking Be- about it right now. Poss- probably. <laughs> but I was going to say that I... I heard about this cartoon, like, reading about it on Wikipedia, so I looked it up on Google, and you know where one of the very first hits is? Where? It's no longer there. The Cartoon Fatness Wiki. Oh! Yes, because there are a couple of scenes where Marvin eats too much, and somebody had those images of the fat baby burned into their cerebellum so (laughs) thoroughly... Oh my god! They probably wore out their VCR copy. How many? <laughs> oh my gosh! I mean, uh, I can't judge because so much of my adult sexuality was uh, created by like Garfield. But how many people? <laughs> but I feel like you uh, people who like saw Garfield and were like, "I now have a fat fetish." Can still look down on people who got it from Marvin. <laughs> I mean, if someone told me like, "Yeah, I got my fat fetish from watching Marvin," I'd be like, "Marvin sucks." <laughs> Well, and it doesn't make you suck if you uh, got your fat fetish from Marvin, you know? Yeah, yeah. We, it just we means, cannot judge. No, we cannot judge. Your fetish is still fine. It's just uh-huh. that you got it from a bad source. But <laughs> yes. yeah, that's not your fault. I mean, when you're a kid, you see stuff on TV. You have no control over that. Yes. It's just, the, especially back then, the TV is on. There were three channels. What else are you going to watch? What else are you going to do with your time? Nothing. Speaking, speaking of fetishes. How how much do you think that the uh, the theme the prevalent theme in the eighties of cool babies? How much do you think that had to do with the adult baby uh, phenomenon? Oh my gosh! Okay, because well, you wait. had a lot of 
like cool babies who rode skateboards and had adventures. You had, you know, not just Marvin, you had things like Muppet Babies, you had oh. Fantastic Max. That's you true. had all there was well that that was very tight up. Everyone at that point in the in the late eighties was having babies. Well, everything was blank babies or blank kids or blank and son. Uh huh. So, yeah, you're right. That was that was huge, and um, so much of it was like, yeah, just uh, that was when they were like, how do we indicate their babies? Well, they're small and they wear diapers. Yes, they wear nothing but a diaper. A cartoon yeah. baby never puts on a shirt. Yeah, um, but and half the time they clearly were old enough that they should no longer need diapers because they're walking and talking yeah. and everything and communicating with adults but you know in complete sentences but it's like huh i guess they well it's like the boss baby you know where yeah they're like i have you know i drink a special formula that keeps me physically a baby but mentally an adult and i just love shitting in diapers i just love it <laughs> so i do it you know i and yeah boss and i guess you could draw a direct line from the cool babies of the 80s to uh, Boss Baby, which is basically um, and the who is basically the cool '80s Futurama business guy, just as a baby. Yes, he's the he's Clamp from Gremlins Two, but as a baby. Yeah, yeah. So, um, wow. Uh, we've who blown... is uh, who is a good guy version of Trump? Let's not forget. Yeah. We've we've blown the lid off the uh, this this uh, cool baby's continuity. And it all started with Marvin. Ah. <sighs> All right, so I think have, have we said all that needs to be said about Marvin? We've said much more than ever needed to be said about Marvin. Yeah. Why did we even do this? Let's, let's never discuss <laughs> Marvin again. Um, thank Marvin, God, who? Th- thank God, this was the only special ever made about uh, this unmentionable baby. Um, uh, but there are uh, the. Uh, Let's let's see various technical details to discuss oh, yes. about Marvin. I guess the animation is okay. Yeah. It's even a little over animated in some places or sometimes you see too much shadow on Marvin's face. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's perfectly. It has, decent. It has some f- familiar voice actors. Ruth Buzzy is in it. She's in everything. Frank Welker is in it. He's in everything. He's great as always. John Stevenson is in it. He be- probably best known as the voice of Mr. Slate. You recognize oh. him as the grandpa immediately oh, yeah, with this, right. this kind of voice. Yeah. Who was Frank Welker playing in this? Uh, he was the announcer at the uh, baby oh, uh, thing. Okay. I don't think we ever actually saw his face. Maybe we did. Yeah, who knows? I don't want to watch it again and find out. He probably made all the, the Marvin kind of baby noises as well. He does... <laughs> yeah. I was thinking yeah, that, kind that of thing. Marvin, when he made baby noises, sounded a lot like Slimer, who I believe is yes. also Frank Welker. <laughs> Slimer? <Wow>. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, that's I can do a lot good. of Frank Welker voices, actually. <laughs> I was gonna say, Ethan, you have a whole new career as a Marvin impersonator. Yeah. <laughs> so I could also do the Frank Welker dumb guy voice. But... <laughs> Which, you know, would also fit for uh for Marvin. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. That would be so much funnier if Marvin sounded like, you know, the infragable crunk. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. There there most things would actually make this funnier than it was. But Yeah, I mean yeah. I think Marvin Baby of the Year was put on this earth for us to do uh, remixes on it. It should be in YouTube poops. It should have a riff tracks, an official one. It should... I feel like it's kind of uh, obscure at this point, even amongst some, yeah. um, you know. Uh, we'll change that. Well, yeah, after this. Everyone's good. <laughs> do you think as many people are going to listen to our podcast as saw Marvin Baby of the Year in first run? I think uh, more. We're going to. We're gonna make. <laughs> we're gonna do for Marvin Baby of the Year what uh, Red Letter Media did for Miami Connection. So, <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, so it's gonna be big. Uh, but there are also a lot of other animated uh, TV specials about other comic strips that we will probably discuss in future episodes. Yes, tell me one that you're excited about, Mike. Um, I'm actually very excited to talk about the Kathy specials. Oh, yes. Um, As much as I hated Kathy as a child, I feel like they're due for critical re-examination. So that's one I'm I'm kind of gung-ho for. Um, There's three of them, right? Yes, that's right. Um, How about you, Ethan? Are there any that you are particularly uh, interested in talking about? Yes. uh, It 
seems a little uh, disingenuous to call it a special, but it's not really a series either because there's five of them. Hmm. It's Miss Peach of the Kelly School. It is a puppet production of the comic strip Miss Peach. It was made in the 70s. And it really shows its Muppet Show style origins and even has some of the cast of the Muppet Show working on it, even though it's not a Muppet production. So that'll be, uh, I think that'll be really interesting to talk about. Wow. I did not even know that was a thing. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, that I saw like- this special years before I ever heard Miss Peach was even a strip. So Oh, okay. So that was your first experience with it. So that should be uh-huh. interesting to talk about. Um, see the differences there. Um, I'd have, I ha- I think I'm going to have to actually go back and read some this peach because I remember nothing about that strip. I don't no. except that they're like people with very large heads. Yes. And it's well, you know the, all about that. Is it done by the mama guy? Yeah. The mama guy, he died and so did mama actually. Oh, well, did, did you know that they actually, the very last mama strip was all these comic strip characters gathered around at her funeral. Even Jeremy from Zitz was there. Uh, are, is this for real? This is for this real. Is for real? This, the, this sounds the like the actual a, final strip. This sounds, sounds like, like a creepy a, pasta. Yeah, I was gonna say. It's like, uh, are you sure you're not writing this for the next? Uh, <laughs> must have cooked off. Yeah, like Mama's. There's like the lost Mama strip. Mama's dead. No, I, I don't know why they did this, but that's literally what they have. They all. Like Snuffy Smith with shedding tears and everything. Oh my god, I can just imagine it's gonna be like Snuffy Smith saying it's it's uh, deeper than Old Man Fisher's uh, pond and bigger than the tippy top about mountain. What is it, Pa? The hole in my heart from Mama. <laughs> you know her name was Sonia Hobbs. I didn't know I that. I actually did not know that either. I didn't know that either until it read, read it on the grave. So wait a second, but I mean, so so. I, well, that's great. I love it when they do that comic, that thing in comics where they do those crossovers because it indicates yeah. that all comic strip characters exist in the same continuity <laughs> and at the same time period. So literally, you know, as um, Mama is berating her children in the city. You have Appalachian hillbillies driving around 1920s jalopies, <laughs> uh, apparently within driving distance. So they of Mama because they know each other enough to be invited to the funeral. <laughs> oh my gosh, who else was who else was in that thing? Oh, um, I don't know. I'd have to look at it. To find, well, oh, I'll just look at it right now. It's just, like the uh, biggest crossover. Up. Do you remember what is it when uh, when Blondie had that like a hundred years of Blondie and all the comics showed up to just like. Look yeah, I remember that one. And okay, okay, yeah, here it is. Snoopy is there. Okay, Daryl yeah. from Baby Blues is there. Okay, Jeffy is there. He's praying. Wait, oh uh, yeah, okay. Oh my god, <laughs> I... Kathy is there. Yeah, all right. Uh, Kathy uh, does know Lu- the importance of yeah. mothers. Luann is there, and oh. a whole bunch. And there's a mariachi band, a very small one, provided by Sergio Aragonis. Oh. Okay. Um, How delightful. Yes. Uh, I can't believe Mama is fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mel Mel Lazarus is dead, too. So. Did Mel Lazarus die when Mama died? Yes, they died together, On more the or less. On the same day? <laughs> is this like if you die in the comic, you die in real life? <laughs> like, Well, it's like how didn't Charles Schultz die the day after the Peanuts, like, Stop. Yeah, he did, or maybe the day before. Yeah, man. So if so, just you know, warning uh, to all those aspiring cartoons out there, you know, never, never stop, stop drawing. <laughs> yeah, Ooh. your heartbeat is their heartbeat. I, I do like that Snoopy was invited to the funeral, though. Cause... Yeah, he's just standing there staring kind of uncomprehendingly i'm not you know i'm not seeing i don't have it in front of me to see it but in my head i'm just imagining like mama there like in in her her casket and snoopy dancing on it like it's schroeder's piano Wait, is Garfield there? Did, wait, wait. Garfield is not there. No, I can't. There's no, uh, there's I, no food. So, Gar- well, yeah, <laughs> I guess Garfield and Mama had a feud. What is uh, is Marvin there? I guess is the question. See? Marvin is not there. No. Well, well, it's interesting to the see. The only ones, mm-hmm. the only ones I didn't mention yet are 
some old man holding up a dog that I've never rec- never seen before. Okay, I'm, wait, I gotta look this up now. I'm gonna look up Mama's yeah. Dead. Last Mama Strip. Okay, yeah, that's last. The one. God, I, this seems like an epic just troll. Honestly, Last Mama <laughs> Strip. He's like, yeah, you like Mama? Well, she's dead now. She's <laughs> dead. Okay, let's see. Um, come on, show me the picture. Show me the picture. Okay, uh, an old man holding up. What the? Oh, um. What is that from? It's like uh, um, he's from Bizarro. Yeah, it's one of those comics where it's di- it, there's no recurring characters. It's oh, um, like is it Herman? Not, no, Herman. not Herman. I think it might be Ballard Street. Wait, I've never seen that one. Um, and who is this guy standing under the tree? I don't I, know him either. I'm not sure. He's he's a new one. Let's see. I'm looking yep. at it in an article from Deadspin. Does it say who else is in here? Um. Okay, the let's characters see. Characters from Mutts. I don't know their names. Yeah. I see the the dog from For Better or Worse. Yeah. Uh, it seems to be Farley instead of Edgar, which is strange because Farley died about 20 years before. Well, I think he's um man, wow. Um okay, so I'm just now that I'm actually seeing this picture, I'm first of all, uh the tiny mariachi band. <laughs> it's 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 adorable. Uh, man, uh, okay, okay, but Kathy is tiny. She only comes up to, like, Jeremy Duncan's, like, waist. This really, uh, tells us more than we ever expected about, uh, the comics world, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, and Mama, I know Mama was tiny. Her grave is enormous. It's, it's <laughs> bigger, than, like, her gravestone is bigger than the mourners. Um... Luann is dressed appropriately for mourning. She's all in black. Yeah. But Jeremy just came in his like, you know, his flannel and I think he wandered into the wrong funeral. Yeah. Who is this guy though in the corner? Who is that? Oh, I, I'm nothing. It's I'm going to assume it's some sort of uh some sort of psychopomp. Yeah. Um He came to take her away. I um oh my gosh. I I'm just i'm trying you know honestly i i I feel kind of bad saying it but mama's funeral is kind of sparsely attended considering the comics world well well the whole point of mama is that no one really likes her yeah well none of her children are there so no that's kind of telling Um, you're right Wow. Uh, so uh, that was a, a little bit of a transgression. In, uh, yeah. Not trans, di, uh, trans. Yeah, no, it's transgression. Let's say that. Uh, uh, or, digression. Yeah. Digression. Digression. Yeah. Into uh, Mama, who I don't know if she's ever been adapted into any other medium. Uh, no, I don't think she has. Damn, I'm kind of disappointed. <laughs> that now. would make this a whole lot, a whole lot more interesting. Too. Yeah, um, we're gonna have to look up more about who these characters are because I seriously, these guys in the corner, I, I if okay, anyone out there who's listening and knows who the mourners at Mama's funeral are, please leave a message below this somehow. Contact us. Let us know because I'm, I'm out of ideas. I'm baffled. There are more dogs at this funeral than there are women. <laughs> oh, yeah. Actually, wow. Only there are two women. Uh, one, two, three, four, five dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I assume these are the these are just the people that like were friends with Mel Lazarus. <laughs> um, wow. Um, OK, um, that's a thing. <sighs> So, Ethan, um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, before we leave, uh, why don't you tell anyone who's listening, who's who's listened this far, made it all the way through both Marvin and the death of Mama? Uh, where, where can they find you online? What else are you doing? Oh, well, you this? can find well, you can find me and as the hungry reader at the dot com, where you will find all kinds of uh, d- digression filled videos like this some of which feature my friend mike that's me and, <laughs> yes and many others that are my uh my ruminations and sh- just sharing of my favorite picture books because children's books are my passion and you can also find my most recent work at uh uh 
Well, I'll just put the, the link up, but uh, I would encourage you, if you want to see more by me, you should check out my novel, because I have just written a novel, and it is free to, free to read online at bogleech.com. Yes, it's part of the Creepypasta Cook-Off. Oh, and yeah. my Yes. There are over 260 fantastic stories for you to read there, and mine is the absolute longest. My, I, this was written in a... Uh, this was written with my partner Glumdrop, and her. You can also see more of her work at pizzadventures.tumblr.com. Check it out; it's her uh, on, ongoing comic strip. Nice. And Mike, do you have anything of yours that you would like to share? Sure. Um, well, you know, I'm a uh, I'm a man of many talents myself. Besides talking a lot, um, you can see most of my work at uh, my website www.guttersnipecomic.com, which includes. Uh, comics, graphic novels, text games, and other various sundries. And also yes. uh, check me out on Twitter at Bitter Corella, where I'm famous, Tumblr famous, for making a viral thread once and constantly also trying to chase that dragon again. But You, you can never get enough of that, really. Yeah. yeah, can't get enough of that sweet music, you know. But, well, you haven't added to it recently, so. Oh, well, you know, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, well, people, yeah, yeah. One of these days, I'll think of another joke. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I guess that's uh, that's all for now. But we'll be probably be back yes. to talk about more awful uh, comics yes. and some good ones too. Soon enough. <laughs> yeah. This this podcast has been brought to you by nobody. We are not sponsored by anyone. But if you would like to sponsor us, we will we will actually go so far as to not slander your name at the end of the podcast. But until then, Blue Apron serves poison. <laughs> Dollar Shave Club will rake your face until you bleed. <laughs> and and whatever that and whatever that online whatever that Netflix for anime is, it's crap too. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's called um uh is it Crunchyroll? Crunchyroll, yes. Yeah, the, the bad. Cru- yes, the people at Crunchyroll are uh, pe- are pedophilia advocates. So <laughs> Yeah, maybe yeah. I should blank that out. <laughs> Go to Crunchyroll to see more of those more baby orgasms than you can see yes. in, uh, in Marvin <laughs> colon Baby of the Year. Yes, this has been Ethan and Mike Podcast of the Year. <laughs>